All right, folks, it's time for the Northeast Premier Fishing Show, The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson, now in our second decade. The Fishing Line is brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports by phone when you need them. Oh, fish on, here we go. Hey, folks, when I'm not out here doing the Fishing Line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the Fishing Line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up-to-the-minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the Fishing Line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill Ethanol Treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Before you can yell fish on, you need to gear up to catch that big one. It's the 4th Annual Toyota Saltwater Fishing Expo, featuring the entire world of saltwater angling. Aisle after aisle of saltwater tackle displays, charter boat captains in the 2009 boats. Learn from the pros with free fishing seminars. Don't miss TV star Jose Wehebe, the Spanish fly. Plus, cooking the catch seminars with David Pops Mash. See the entire line of 2009 Toyota trucks. It's all here for the saltwater angler at the Toyota Saltwater Fishing Expo, March 20th to the 22nd at the Garden State Exhibit Center in Somerset, New Jersey. Don't miss it! Hey, fishermen, for the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. Hi folks and welcome to this week's show as we battle a little case of laryngitis. With so many ways to catch fluke and with so many shorts around, today's fluke special will take us through the season with techniques and tactics for catching larger fluke. First up is ocean fluking. Here we like to use large strip baits and bluefish make some of the best baits for jumbo fluke. Taking a small one to two pound bluefish, we fillet the fish as we would for the table. We then take the fillet and cut it into three separate strips, forking the tail of each one. My favorite piece is the belly strip because it's the thinnest, it swims better, and the silver flash of the belly is the big draw. The key here is to place the hook through the bait only once. If you do it twice, it'll spin. And make sure you go through the flesh side first, it'll stay on the hook better. And don't overlook hard jigging the bait off the bottom as you would a diamond jig. These big fluke will come right off the bottom and take that bait real hard. Oh, there he is. There he is on the jig. He's not a five-pounder, but yeah. he's a decent fish. Nice job. Once again, just slow, steady pressure. If he wants to go, let him make a run. But there's no reason to pump up and reel down when you're fluke fishing. Let me know when you got color, Mark. Yeah, the breeze really picked up in here. What a spring. Oh, wind and rain, wind and rain. He's, 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 he's turned into a nicer yeah. fish. <laughs> I don't want to jinx myself, but he's, he's a nicer fish. Just watch, watch that one rock, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's just see if you can steer him back to your left yep. a little bit more. Keep him away from the other line. <clears throat> nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. That's what we're looking for. Slide right over the top. There he That's is. There's our fish. A big strip bait. There we go. There's our nice That's fluke. a five pound fish. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh man, look at that. Look at the mouth on the size of the mouth and the teeth on these things. That is amazing, a big strip bait. Now that's what I call some hot fluking. 
Many of us spend our time on the party boat fleets around the area. Now here are a few tips to keep in mind when party boat fluking and the rigs we like to use both in the bay and in the ocean. Ooh, that's a nice fluke. Folks, there is an unbelievable array of fluke rigs that you can purchase in the store. They come in a variety of style sizes. We're using uh, dolphin tackle rigs with white and green being the two dominant colors for most part when you're fluke fishing. But if you want to catch some trophy flukes, sometimes it pays to tie your own rigs. And a couple rigs we can use are high-low rigs or tandem rigs. And the first high-low rig we're going to show you is a fluke bullet rig. Now, a fluke bullet rig is nothing more than using a chromed cannonball fluke bullet on the bottom, which is a bucktail. And tied above that about 20 inches is another small miniature bucktail, about a quarter ounce with a lead head and a chartreuse. The colors really are your preference. This is a good way to make a high-low or teaser rig. Another rig we can use is to go a little bit lighter. And of course, we'll be using our fluke bullet on the bottom. And this has a rubber skirt and feather teaser on the bottom. But above that, about 18 inches, we're using a simple rubber skirt and feather teaser with no lead and no weight on it. This is a good rig for shallow water bucktailing for fluke during the summertime. Now the third rig we can use, particularly when you're looking for large trophy fluke, is a tandem rig. And the tandem rig we have is we've snailed two Daiichi hooks, about a 4.0 or 5.0 in size, about three to four inches apart from each other. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use one whole squid. I'm gonna take a long strip of sea robin, long strip of fluke ribbon, a fluke belly, and I'm gonna put one on the front hook and one on the back hook and give us a very large profile bait. On top of that, what I might do is slide down our crystal flash as a teaser on top of that. So now I'll have two large strip baits and some crystal flash to give it a little bit more flash in the water. Tying some of these rigs, particularly this tandem rig, can lead to some big trophy fluke, particularly when you're fishing out in the ocean. Try them, I think you're gonna like them. In the heat of summer, fluke move to the back bays and feed on the hatched juvenile bait fish swimming in the nurseries. Now is the time to scale down our presentation, use light tackle and small bucktails to fish shallow water for keeper fluke. My guest today is a locally recognized Sharpie in his style of fluking and dusts for every day fishing for his fish market and restaurant. Artie Horning is considered by many to be one of the best. Each season he scores impressive fluke into double digits using the same tackle and techniques we'll show you today. Woo! What's going to make somebody want to stop in a particular area? You're looking for bird life, bait bird life? Bird life, you know, usually when the fish are around, there's plenty of, of uh, terns, uh, egrets. You can see there's some egrets up on a marsh. Right. You know, they're looking to eat, to eat too, so... Uh, so the key is finding bait. The key is, you know, just watching for other signs of nature that might be able to help you, you know, improve your catch. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, certainly in a small boat, you don't have very much in a way of sophisticated electronics. Right. Um, there are certain little techniques, taking ranges, two-point and four-point ranges, to keep you on the same spot. Now, what do you mean by a two-point or a four-point range? Well, usually what you try to do is get one object in front of another object, and that would be, if you look to the south, that would be your east and west range. And if you look to the, to the east or the west, place an object in front of another object, like a house in front of a tower or right. a buoy in front of a building. And that would give you your north and south range. So actually, uh, it's about as precise as Loran. And for a guy that has a small boat and certainly, you know, not that much, much on the boat in the way of electronics, it's a good way to actually, in a bay, stay in, in one spot, especially mm -hmm. if you find a couple of fish. Right. And you can get, you know, a lot of people go, f you know, drift for fluke. They'll get a couple of fish, keep going, keep going, keep going, get nothing. They'll go back, get a couple of fish, keep going, keep going. When actually the fish, they can be 50 or 100 fish in a, in, in a 20 or 30 yard uh, range on the bottom, you know? Right, just on the bottom. It's time for the boating tip of the week, brought to you by Boaters World, boating and fishing for the world. Hey folks, I got a good boating tip for you this week. What I do is I go get a case of water, large bottles, I freeze them. And this serves two purposes. Number one, I got black ice for my cooler or my live well. And number two, as it slowly melts, I've always got cool water to drink. Now, you have to remember, it's hot summer out here. you got to make sure you've got plenty of liquids on board. Stay away from the alcohol. Drink plenty of water. You'll feel better, and you'll have better fishing. 
That's this week's tip. Oh, fish on, here we go. Hey, folks, when I'm not out here doing the fishing line television show, guess what I'm doing? I'm on WGBB 1240 AM bringing you the fishing line radio show every Saturday afternoon with up to the minute fishing reports throughout the show, weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for the fishing line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. Yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill Ethanol Treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Hey, fishermen! For the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. Before you can yell fish on, you need to gear up to catch that big one. It's the 4th Annual Toyota Saltwater Fishing Expo, featuring the entire world of saltwater angling. Aisle after aisle of saltwater tackle displays, charter boat captains in the 2009 boats. Learn from the pros with free fishing seminars. Don't miss TV star Jose Wehebe, the Spanish fly. Plus, cooking the catch seminars with David Pops Mash. See the entire line of 2009 Toyota trucks. It's all here for the saltwater angler at the Toyota Saltwater Fishing Expo, March 20th to the 22nd at the Garden City Exhibit Center in Somerset, New Jersey. Don't miss it! <laughs> To relax the fish, yep. get, opens his mouth, see you later. Party, on today's show we're bucktailing, a lot of bucktails on the market, sled heads, smiling bills, ball heads, bullet heads, spear heads. We're using Key Largo bucktails for the most part. My buddy and your buddy Joe Gallo tied a lot of the bucktails on the table at West End Bait and Tackle as well. Most people usually go out and start with a one ounce bucktail. Is that a good choice? I would say f for the average a uh, fisherman that wants to go out and try to develop some expertise at bucktailing mm -hmm. and catching fish, a one ounce probably would be the right choice. Only because at that point, using a one ounce, it'll be easier for him with, the with, with, to, feel the, to right. feel the bottom. The bucktail has got to be on the bottom in order to catch a fluke. So they might want to start using eight or ten pound test using a one ounce bucktail and graduate down, and to, graduate half down to half ounce or even quarter ounce depending on what the wind and tide conditions are. Now do you have a preference in color or shaped head on these bucktails already? Right now it seems to me uh, I don't I'm not sure if the shape of the head is that important but the color pink has been working the best. Basically I think because of the fact that these fish are feeding on shrimp up in the back whether there's some sort of, sort of uh, resemblance to the pink and, and the shades of the, of the, of the grass shrimp, um, I don't know, but pink seems to be working the best. Now one other thing I notice you do as well, Artie, is most bucktails come with a lot of hair, it looks real nice and pretty. I notice no matter what the size of the bucktail is, you like to trim down the hair right to the back edge of the hook. Why is right. that? Uh, basically, I found that cutting the hair back uh, gives you your catch percentage uh, goes way up. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, with the long hair, the piece of squid, maybe a piece of spearing on there. The fish have a tendency with that long hair to hit it a little short. You trim the hair back, your catch percentage goes way up. Now you mentioned bait. We're using small bait. A lot of you folks may wonder what's going on here. You're cutting your squid strips in about two inch strips and you're also using the small uh, spearing that most people would throw out of the bag only wanting to use a jumbo. Why is that? A absolutely. And I think it, it boils down to a question of trying to match the hatch in the back bay, you're dealing with small spearing fry right now. The mm -hmm. fish are feeding on the small spearing fry. If you have small spearing on your bucktail, that's what's in the water, and, and that seems to be working well. And a lot of grass shrimp in the back also, so it's Absolutely. a lot of small bait this a time of year. A lot of small bait this time of the year. And yep. big fluke takes small bait. Don't be fooled, folks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we had caught a 10-pounder earlier in the season, I think the first week of May, using those small uh, spearing on the bucktail. And believe me, a big, a big fish will eat a small spearing as fast as a big one. Oh, that's got oh, a little bit of weight. Oh, head. Shaker, head shaker.
Oh, son, get the net. Get the net, Artie. Four for four. Nice fish. That's a keeper right there. Nice fish. That looks like 17. Yep. Woo! 17. 17. Right on the butt. Right on the money. Nice fish. In the brine. Oh, there was choked again. Buddy, we got typical southwest afternoon wind in the summertime. Got to be blowing 15, easy 20 here. Tide's running out against the wind, and we're back trolling with the tide against the wind. Why is that? Actually, I think the most natural presentation for the bait is to work with the tide. Right. Uh, if you can stem it and hold it in a spot from time to time while you're back trolling, that's great. Uh, gives you an opportunity to work a ledge or a contour on the bottom for a few minutes. If you didn't do that, we'd be probably drifting five knots the other way with the wind. Which and would be going against the tide. Which would be going against the tide. And, and most, uh, most game fish feed oh, into the tide? Oh, you got a bite? Yeah, got a bite. There you go, Artie, there you go. Nice. Sometimes it works on cue, folks. <laughs> I love it. Little guy. Little guy. That's the whole key is you want to keep going in the same direction as the tide and try to without, keep up with the speed? That, that, yeah, absolutely. And, with, and without going too fast, that uh, you have a hard time holding the bottom. You're using right. a very light head. Half ounce. I mean, half ounce right now. We go to a quarter under some conditions. And, you know, in order to give that the right, you know, presentation on the bottom, uh, you can't be drifting at too rapid a rate, either with the tide or with the wind. So... Right now, we're trying to compensate for the strong wind right. and work the boat with the tide a little bit. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, how oh, oh, do you stack the steel, nice baby? Fish. Oh, nice fish. I got the net duty. How do you want to play these nice. fish when oh, you bring them? Oh, nice How do you want fish. to play these fish, Artie? Nice and easy. Don't horse them. Oh, this is a decent fish. There you go. There you go. Oh, that's another nice keeper. fish. That's 17. That's a good one. Yep. That's a good one. There we go. Nice fish there. Oh, that's, that's thick. Two, that's a heavy two and fish. And a half pounds, Easy. Two and a half pounds. Man, oh man. That's a nice fish there, Artie. That is almost 18 inches about 17 and three quarters look at that nice fish fat look how thick shrimp that is shrimp fed they taste better after eating oh, grass shrimp oh shrimp fed fluke doesn't get any better than that there we go nice right in the brine oh fish on here we go hey folks when i'm not out here doing the fishing line television show guess what i'm doing i'm on wgbb 12:40 a.m bringing you the fishing line radio show every saturday afternoon with up to the minute fishing reports throughout the show Weekly guest experts sharing their tips and secrets, and we take your phone calls live on the air. If you want to know where the fish are, not where they were, join me every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. on WGBB 1240 AM radio for The Fishing Line. This is Ed's boat. It costs big bucks. <laughs> yeah. This is new Marine Formula Stay Bill Ethanol Treatment. It costs a few bucks. When Ed fuels up, he doesn't add new Marine Formula Stay Bill. Nah. Too bad. Because the ethanol in his fuel caused engine deposits and corrosion. Now it won't start. And repairs are big bucks. Poor Ed. Marine Formula Stay Bill would prevent that. With twice the corrosion protection, four times the cleaners. Now when you fill up and when you store, start with Stay Bill. Hey, fishermen, for the most comprehensive reports and fishing information on the Internet, log on to www.thefishingline.com. Thefishingline.com has fishing reports for boats, surf, freshwater, or party and charter boats for Long Island's tri-state area. Now you can listen to the Fishing Line radio show live on the web, Saturdays at 4 p.m., or see video clips of the TV show. Know where they are, not where they were, with thefishingline.com. What you need to know in fishing, it's www.thefishingline.com. 
As summer turns to early fall and children prepare for a return to school, snappers run through our bays and inlets, and that's the time we go to live bait presentations for trophy fluke using baby bunker or live snappers. That one's just about borderline size. We're looking for the smallest snappers we can. We've only culled through them, but we're trying to get the small size snappers. Get that out, put them right in the live well. That's not a bad size. I think he'll be all right. Right in the live well he goes. We're working this little school in here, see if we can get a couple more. Oh, here we go, here we go, come on, nice and easy. Get them going in the direction you want to get them, and then you lift them right in the boat. That's what we're looking for, that's a nice size snapper. That's perfect for fluke. Go get our allotted 10. Nice little half a hand size, and the live well he goes. What we're looking here for, folks, you notice we got a lot of rock croppings down here, a lot of depressions, a lot of boulders. I'm looking for some of the rockiest terrain I can find for this kind of fluke fishing with these live snappers. Fluking will be holding in the depressions right on the bottom edges of these drop-offs and we're looking for real rocky bottom. These fluke this time of year right after this new moon in August so are hanging out on this hard, hard bottom, real rocky stuff. And if you can find some of these areas that got some good bait marks, that's where you want to be fishing. So we're just going to kind of cruise around here in our area and try to find some marks and bait. And don't, you know, don't worry if you don't see bait, you still want to work some of these areas because fluke do not show up on the fish finder. Now here I see some bait starting to come in here, there's a little piece of bait up in here. We're looking for some nice areas, looks like a nice drop off, you see it goes from 30 to 39 feet in here. That's a real nice looking place to fish. Now we want to get on the outgoing tide and drift this way and as you drop the bait down into the hole, the fluke hopefully will be laying right up in there. And then again on the upslope, as you come up the upslope, that means there'll be a downslope on the other side of that peak. Uh, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking for hard, rocky bottoms, using live snappers, and if you can find bait on them, you're halfway home. Now for the rig, the rig is pretty simple. All I've done is taken a small snap and attach it to a medium-sized three-way swivel, and to that I tie an improved clinch knot and use a two-foot stretch, 24 inches, of 40 or 50-pound test Berkeley big game line, and that's all you need. Surprising, but that's all you need is two feet of line to be successful in this. And with that, I'm tying an improved clinch knot to my number two Daiichi hook. And you say, why a treble hook? Remember, you may only get three or four bites a day. You want a hook that's going to stick them and stick them every time. That's why I use a Daiichi treble hook. Follow this little tackle segment. You're going to put more big fluke in the boat. It's time for the boating tip of the week brought to you by Boaters World, boating and fishing for the world. You know, folks, catching big fish relies on knowing the speed of your drift, particularly in this fluke fishing. And every time I go up and start a new drift, I reset the Loran. Why? Because the Loran is going to pick up the speed you're moving to get to the start of the new drift. And if you don't reset the Loran, by the time you figure out what the speed of your drift actually is, you could be at the end of the drift or the drift could be over and you won't even know how fast your boat is going. Remember, slow drifts for big fluke, reset the Loran every time you start a new drift. Now, when it comes to hooking the live snappers on your treble hooks, you just want to go in here, you want to get a, a bait out of the live well. Oh, he got me. And what I want to do is you want to go through the nostril with the treble hook. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, I'm going to find a nostril. I'm going to come right in like that. I'm going to push through and a little bit down, not a lot down because you don't want to go into the head. I'm going to go through the nostril. I'm going to come out the other, other nostril just like that. And once I do that, all I'm going to do is kind of hold them. You don't want to let them flop around hanging from the hook because he'll, he'll bounce himself off. So you're going to take them, we're going to drop them right in the water. And there he is swimming, he's swimming like a wild man on the rig. There he is. That's what you want. You want that kind of action. I'm just going to put the reel in free spool. I'm going to put it down the bottom. And i got to stand up. I don't like sitting down when I'm fishing, so I want to stand up. And now, just amount of holding on and watch what happens. Oh, 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 wow, he slammed that one. Woo! Man, oh man, it feels like a nice fish. Always easy, always bring them up nice and easy. We moved them about 22 foot of water off this rock pile here. Always, always nice and easy. Just slow, steady pressure. When you're doing, doing this kind of fishing, folks, you don't really have to set the hook. You just let him set the hook himself and bring up slow. Now, oh, wow! Man, oh man! Net head first. Bring him in. Wow, that's what you're talking about. Woo! Oh man, that's a five, six pound fish. Look at that. Man, oh man, is my other rod going off? I don't think so, no. Look at that. That is a nice fish, folks. That's five, six pounds. 
Now we just caught the fish. We're coming up here to do that drift again. And what we're doing now is, besides using a live snapper, is we're looking for little schools of bait being chased by snappers. And even though big fluke are lazy in nature, they're still predatory, which is why we're using the snappers. I want to show you folks something here too at home. Let me come around here. If you'll notice, this fish is full of spots. I keep saying rocks and fish the hard bottom rocky areas this time of the season. But if you notice, he's got the large blotches on his back along with some of the whitest spots along the edges and on his fins. And if you lo really look at his tail, you can really see some nice spots on his tail. They're camouflaging themselves on the rocky bottom, and that's why we want to keep our drift nice and slow, because they're lazy fish. You may see bait being sprayed, and some of the small snappers and some of the smaller fluke chasing them, but big fluke are lazy. I also want to show you just why we're using snappers, and a lot of you folks may underestimate just how predatory in nature this fish really is. If you come in here and look at the size of these teeth in the mouth of this fluke, let me just pull this back and you can see those are some gigantic choppers and they're very very sharp teeth. You have to keep your hands away from there and, these, and this fish can really open up his mouth wider than I have it here and it can really just suck down these snappers without any kind of a problem. Now this is a nice five and a half six pound fish but don't underestimate just how vicious a predator they are but at the same time remember the larger fish do become very lazy, and we want to drift real nice and slow, deep water, good, hard, rocky bottom, and live snappers. Let's go rig up, get ready, maybe we can do this again. There's a thump, there's a thump. Ooh, what do we got? Oh, I hope it's not, he's feeling like another stargazer, but we'll see here. Oh, yeah, he's, thump, he's thumping now. Oh yeah, it feels nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah, where's the net? Where's the net? Where's the net? Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about, baby. That's what we're talking about. That is a nice fluke. Put the net in. We're going to head first. Oh, oh, I missed him. Come on. Come on, baby. Come back up. Nice and easy. I'm going to bring him head first into the net. Holy sh... Woo! He's still, he's still going. Still running. Still running. Uh-oh, come on. Come on, one for Papa, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. You, should, you, should, you should, don't even get that many, that many chances at it. I got it, I got it. Here he comes, here he comes. Gonna slide him head first right into that. Come on. Head first into the... There we go. That, that is what we are talking about. Wow. That's a seven-pound fish. Look at that. Woo! Man, oh man! That is a big fish. That's right, folks. That fish was well over seven pounds. And there you have it. Some specific tactics and techniques you can use for fluking during the stages of the angling season. Don't be afraid to try them and see if they work for you. I'm sure they will, and I know you'll be rewarded with a doormat of your own. Good luck in your fluke fishing, and thanks for being with us, and we'll see you on the water. Hey folks, if you'd like to add this episode or any episode of the Fishing Line to your library collection, just follow the directions on the screen. Yeah, baby! The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson was brought to you by Marine Formula Stable. To prevent the damaging effects of ethanol in your fuel tank, use Marine Formula Stable. And by the Long Island Power Authority. More choice, better service, LIPA. And by the Fishing Report Hotline. 24-hour fishing reports. By phone when you need them.